on this episode of Digitox. Doctoral student Shane Lynch joins me in our final episode of the season to discuss his time as a Haystack Scholar, his DH projects, and the advice he has for future DH scholars. The Digitox podcast is brought to you by the Institute for Digital Research in the Humanities and the Hall Center at the University of Kansas. You can find Digitox on Simplecast and iTunes. We thank you for listening and enjoy. So to begin with, this first question I like asking just to just to get a, give the audience a sense of who I'm speaking with and their and their sort of history. And I know part of your research is is kind of looking at origin stories. So I thought we might begin there, but with your origin story. I'm a member of the Gila River Indian community. I lived about half my life off reservation, though. I am. Before I came back to school, I um, I had lived on reservation for about 10 years. But when I first started my college journey, I was a two-dimensional artist, uh, painting and drawing, uh, pastels, things like that. Um, I went to uh, junior college in uh, North Iowa, North Iowa Area Community College uh, for two years. And then I transferred to Haskell, uh, where I continued uh, studying art. And then I quit school and started working for my tribe. I worked for them for 10 years and then decided uh, that I needed to further my education. So I returned to Haskell to uh, finish out uh, uh, my two-year degree and my AA and also my BA there. I was encouraged to stay there by my advisor, who was actually my advisor that was there the first time I was at Haskell. She encouraged me to uh, enroll into the Indigenous American Indian Studies program there. I had taken uh, Photoshop because I had uh, dabbled in computer graphics and things like that when I was in high school and also a little bit in college, too, when I was uh, trying to get my first degree. And then I also took a GIS course at Haskell, too, during my first two years there, because I was really interested in geography because I uh, I had worked two years as a field archaeologist, like a tech out in the field for my for my tribe. We were mainly doing excavation because we had a uh, it was called Pima, Pima uh, Maricopa Irrigation Project, where we were just basically excavating because they had to widen canals and make more reservoirs due to our uh, our settlement that we had with the government for our water rights. And so I did that for a couple of years where it was that's actually what uh, my goal was when I was first coming back to school was to uh, get a B.A. in anthropology. But I was, as I said, I was encouraged to stay at Haskell. So um, once I got in, I graduated from high school, then I went to KU and enrolled in the Indigenous Studies master program there. And that's where I started doing DH projects. The head of our department in ISP was uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, uh, Stephanie Fitzgerald. She uh, had a couple classes that actually dealt with, you know, combining Indigenous thought with, with uh, DH project. I had started working on some on a WordPress page for one of the projects for that. But simultaneously, I was also taking a class with Dr. Thorat, who was a uh, postdoc at KU uh, during my MA. And she was the one that introduced me to how to, you know, use WordPress and other other things too that dealt with DH projects. I um, And she was the one that actually encouraged me to uh, apply to Haystack also for uh, my mapping project that I'm, I'm still working on. But the, with those two influences, and then plus also uh, Josh Miner and the film department at KU, really influenced me as far as uh, continuing working on different uh, sorts of DH projects because I took a, a video game class with Professor Miner, along with some other film and media classes that really helped me, uh, so to speak, go in that direction with my uh, part of my research. But it's um, so I continued with that, and then I got accepted in the Haystack, and that was really helpful. It's just been I've been associated, I guess, with different digital media for a while, but I just never really applied anything until recently. Got it. Yeah, and and so with all your the work that you've done in digital media and kind of applying it to your, uh, your research focus, have you come to develop a, a certain understanding or, um, I guess, idea of what digital humanities is and, um, what initially brought you to, uh, sort of, and bringing out more directly what 
initially interested you and and, and uh, I guess in addition to the encouragement that you received, uh, what else brought you to and 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 sort of compelled you to to focus or pursue digital humanities projects? So first, yeah, uh, what's what's your what understanding or or uh, concept conception have you developed over about uh, digital humanities? Basically, what it what do you find to be that it is, um, and what else compelled you to to go in this direction? I think of digital humanities as a form of art because it incorporates basically the non-digital media's art forms into this form. And it combines technology also along with programming and et cetera. It's, I see it as a way uh, is because everything's going this way. It's, basically how it uh and to preserve things or even just to use the media is basically part of our lives now in in different forms and so it just really inspired me to do more projects that are important to me as far as like my mapping project Uh, i hopefully it'll be more than just me working on it eventually. I hope to hand it off to the community and they run with it, hopefully, or at least add it on to our tribal page. It's just, that really is part of my motivation for doing these projects because I see that we have a need to use technology to further educate people. Right, and getting into your map, uh, your mapping project, and and at least as one of the projects you're doing, can you go into I guess a bit more about uh, what's being mapped and what sort of technologies or digital methods are being utilized uh, for that project? I'm trying to map the Peeposh migration to their current area with the Otham people, uh, which is south of Phoenix. We migrated here due to war with the Yuma and the Mojave tribes that were basically, our, our tribe was located, originally located, well, not originally located, because as human people, we believe that we come from Baja, California, in the, the Gulf area there is where we think our culture originated. But our people had lived in between the uh, Yuma and the Mojave, south of Parker on on the Colorado River. And due to disputes, there's been several or two main ones. One was due to a marriage that was not acceptable or it was a battle for resources. The two versions that I've been using for the page that I made. People started leaving the area in the late 1700s and it lasted till the early 1800s. By the time everybody had come to this area or to the Phoenix Basin, basically. I really wanted to map this because there is no representation of it on the internet right now. Or when I started this project, anyway, um, when I was getting my MA. When I started the project, it was due to Dr. Thorat's class because she presented us with different medias like Omika and some other uh, ways to do digital projects. Why I chose to use WordPress was because of that class too, because of how versatile it was as far as just making something really quick also, since it's a lot of templates and things like that. I started off by wanting it to be strictly uh, open source, everything free and using it. I started it as more like a GIS project because that's what I had training in, a a limited training in. I only took one class. And then it kind of grew into being more of an art project, combining that. Because I had used, when I was a field archaeologist, we had used, they're called pace maps, where they're kind of a less accurate area of map or less accurate way of mapping by just taking steps. Well, I mean, it's close. (laughs) But um, so that kind of, I had, I was reminded of that as I thought of what I've done as far as with mapping with this stuff. And so it really just started off with using open source materials and then fixing them up. So they would look like 200 years ago before the industrial revolution, basically. And when the rivers ran, it started like that. 
And now um, I really want to uh, focus on the storytelling aspect because it's written more academic right now. And I would also like to hand draw the maps now also. And so make it uh, less GIS feeling and more organic, so to speak, by creating um, hand-drawn maps and uh, eventually animations to go along with it to kind of tell the story too. Because I would like the site to be more interactive. And you, you're you also working on a, a gaming project or, or I'm not sure if, you, if that's come to uh, a completion yet, but it, it's... Was that project a part of this um, goal of this mapping goal, or is it something separate that that you were working on? It's actually something separate, but by doing both projects at the same time, it really helped me bounce ideas off for both both of them because that's where the whole animation idea came from was from the video game. Uh, the video game project is I've changed the. Um, Hopefully for both projects, I'll have something done by the time I graduate in three years. So that's the goal for both projects. But the uh, the video game project is is a combination of the Autumn, Nakama Autumn and Peeposh creation stories. And so it's kind of hard to combine both of them. The Autumn one makes a better video game as far as there's a lot of war in there. And things like that, because that's basically where I picked the game up at is in the creation. You're, I want to animate, have some cutscenes where they're kind of interactive, kind of like God of War and uh, cutscenes that are interactive that tell the creation story. And then it goes into the battles that CHA, the elder brother God, had to regain power. And basically you'll be playing as the elder brother God and leading forces to take back uh, different uh, Adobe structures and things like that, and just different regions, the original Autumn areas. That'll be like its own level, and then the next level, or so to speak, level, it'll just be a change in the game where it'll be more focused on like an RPG, just living in a village and controlling an avatar of your choice, where you get to choose all aspects of the character and then hopefully have some kind of, you know, ongoing updates and things like that to try to keep people interested in the game. Cause the, that's one of the goals too, is to have it um, replayable so that it, it keeps adding new players, things like that. And of course, at least in the village, they'll be based on norms of the tribes and the values, et cetera. What, what are some of the things that you hope uh, players take away from that game once they're given a chance to play? I want to incorporate language and language games as side things, just available. They won't be part of it if you don't want it to be. But I hope to, that to mix a lot of traditional stories in there, including modern stories, too, as far as kind of like it, make it set before colonization but have it timeless with modern stories too, where you can unlock them by doing different side missions. And for audiences new to, because uh, one, one, you mentioned that you want to include the norms of the tribes into, or incorporate them into the gaming and, and I guess the, uh, how they interact within the game. What are some of the norms that, that you can identify uh, and speak a little bit about for for those not familiar with uh, with them. I will. Uh, I want to emphasize the different roles that people had. I know for that every person had a job to do, and then the so called chief or leader of that that band would organize everybody and get the day started. Things like that, simple things like that, just showing everyday life of what they had to do every day to survive. And so I hope to create a value system through there by just the interactions, by the things people say, and hopefully update that too so it doesn't get boring with the, the same thing said over and over. Okay, great. And then uh, next is, uh, I'm, correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, I, I think you've, uh, your haystack your time as a Haystack Scholar uh, has reached a conclusion. 
But what can you say about uh, the time you spent in the program and some of the th- some of the, uh, the highlights of your time in the in the program? Um, it was great uh, being a Haystack Scholar. I learned a lot about different ways to do digital projects. It was a really good experience. Uh, before COVID, uh, we would have meetings and things like that. And it was really great and workshops in person. And But we continued online with workshops, which was great. I really benefited a lot from the workshops provided through Haystack and IDRH. For future folks who uh, are thinking about DH or liberal arts or humanities majors that have never heard of uh, digital humanities, uh, let alone the sort of projects that have been going on in our campus. What advice could you give to them about DH and getting involved in DH? Uh, and what are some, what's maybe a some argument or plea that more people or more humanists should get involved in, in DH? Well, I think anyone in the humanities should consider DH project, projects. Um, I think that you can reach a lot more people outside a- academia with these projects. And it will just depends on your audience that you want to express your thoughts to or these findings or research that you're doing. It really helps, I think, because it's more giving yourself a voice, even though it is limited, but it's still you're getting something out there. I really have enjoyed doing projects like this because it helped it helped me think about things differently because I was always 2D artist. I wasn't, didn't animate anything before and learning different ways to do art to me was really beneficial. I really have enjoyed learning. It's been hard at times and frustrating, but I feel something that everybody should meet, should try because you create your own content. It's just another form of art. I think with, no matter what you put up there. Great. Thank you, uh, Shane. And I, I, uh, I think the points that you mentioned in your last sort of comment there is, is very, uh, very important to take for, I think our audience to take away is if you're an artist and, and you can, and you've kind of put that to the side for your studies and for your, for your research, or maybe you do it on the side, this is maybe an opportunity for you to incorporate that back into what you do or what you do for your daytime sort of thing. And and so I, with that, Shane, I, th- I appreciate your time and I appreciate uh, you coming on the show and share and sharing your, your insights and your experience in, in the digital humanities. Thank you.